right. Welcome to Rethink Gaming's Tuesday Night RPGs featuring Curse of Strahd played through Discord and Fantasy Grounds. Thanks, as always, to Sirenscape for the amazing atmosphere and music. Make sure you check them out at www.sirenscape.com. You've just got to be using it at your gaming table. Additionally, we're featuring the song Dance Macabre, performed by Kevin McLeod. Let's begin. Your party of friends, all whom know each other, one way or another, have been traveling along the road. You're on your way up the Sword Coast, looking for adventure, trying to make your name in this world. Tonight the woods are especially quiet and the air grows chill. Your fire sputters as a low mist gathers around the edges of your camp, growing closer as the night wears on. By morning, the fog hangs thick in the air, turning the trees around you into gray ghosts. Then you notice these aren't the same trees that surrounded you the night before. What do you do? Uh, hey, hey go guys, I don't, I don't think these are the trees that surrounded us the night before. I think something's up. I'm going to roll perception to see if I can tell uh, what's going on around me. All right. There we go. That old 21. <clears throat> okay. You uh, notice immediately that you can't see the sky. It's deeply overcast. No stars. Um, there's wind moving through the trees, but you can't feel it. And just beyond your line of sight is nothing but mist in all directions, save one. Can I investigate one of the closest trees to see if there's anything different about them? Certainly. Ooh, that's just changing it. Hold on. Intelligence and I click that. There we go. It's a tree. It's got bark on it, and it grows from the ground. All right. Well, normal-looking trees. That's, <laughs> that's good. Well, uh, I guess I'm gonna I'm gonna hop on up. And I'm gonna I'm gonna walk over one of these trees and see, uh, or like around, kind of just, I guess, investigate what's going on, uh, see how thick this fog is, see if I can see anything beyond it, just kind of check the perimeter. All right, you can see the, uh, you can see further into the fog as you move into it, but at some point. Uh, you can't even make out the trees beyond it. To the north is a road. It's not the road you came off of, but it's uh, not far from you. Alrighty, uh, I guess I'm going to head back to the others and tell them that there's a road up there. Guys, there's a road up there. Let's say we follow the road, see where it leads. I also say we follow the road. Doesn't look like we've got much safer choices. I mean, it's, stuff's getting eerie. I say we, uh, we keep moving, probably. For the sake of the group. <laughs> that doesn't sound like a bad idea to me. Well, 
let's go then. Okay, as you approach the road to your north, you can go left or you can go right. Can we see anything down the road or is it just road and fog? Um, you can see the forest on either side of the road. The road itself is muddy and well-trodden by wagons. You catch a glimpse of smoke to your left, to the west. Well, it seems like the left path has adventure. Left path does indeed might have adventure. Yes. Yeah. The left path it is, I guess. <clears throat> Onward. Take it, Archibald. <laughs> Run it down, buddy. I'm, I'm going to be right behind him. Yeah, I'll, I'll lead. <laughs> the road gradually disappears and is replaced by a muddy, twisted path through the trees. Deep ruts in the earth are evidence of the comings and goings of wagons. The canopy of mist and branches gives way suddenly to black clouds boiling far above. There's a clearing here next to a river that widens to form a small lake several hundred feet across. Five colorful round tents, each 10 feet in diameter, are pitched outside a ring of four barrel-topped wagons. A much larger tent stands near the shore of the lake, sagging and lit from within. Near this tent, eight unbridled horses drink from the river. The mournful strains of accordion clash with the singing of several brightly clad men around a bonfire. Footpath continues beyond this encampment, meandering north between the river and the forest's edge. Yeah. I'm not one for running into strangers, but uh, looks like they may, may help us find a place to chill out for the night. They might be able to even to tell us how we got here, because uh, I don't know. So you should be able to see a picture of the encampment and an image of the people. Yes. So I say we just head on towards the Yeah, I think we should go greet them. <laughs> go uh, figure out uh, how we ended up here. All right. So you approach the fire? Um, yep. yeah. Sure. Large man with black hair stands up, waves warmly, inviting you to come over. Right. Travelers, welcome. Hello. What brings you to our camp on this fine evening? Well, we were actually kind of hoping that you could tell us that. Perhaps you've come to see Madame Eva. She has been waiting. What is this that you speak of? He gestures to the large tent lit from within. Many come to Eva seeking her wisdom. I mean, I'm down. <laughs> so uh, walk towards the tent. Well, looks like she's got a uh, got all the answers that we need, more than likely. I'm all about being more wise. Fair enough. All right, so we're walking towards the tent. All right, everybody's walking towards the tent. Yep. 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 Magic flames cast a reddish glow over the interior of this tent, revealing a low table covered in a black velvet cloth. 
Glints of light seem to flash from a crystal ball on the table as a hunched figure peers into its depths. As the crone speaks, her voice crackles like dry weeds. At last, you have arrived. Cackling laughter bursts like mad lightning from her withered lips. <laughs> Were you, you were expecting this? Yes. Sit, my child. I'm going to have a seat. I'm going to take a seat next to uh, Rolesk. There's a long couch, sort of bench slash pillow thing. Room enough for all five of you. So then I, I guess we kind of all need to take a seat then. It, this seems a little bit uh, destined. You don't have to. I'll go ahead and take a seat. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a seat, but I'm gonna I'm gonna decisively lean forward, like ready to go at any time. I'll take a seat next to Dell. All right. Tell me, what is it that you seek? Well, uh, I personally would like to know why we're here. We were uh, we were walking along in the woods, and suddenly we were in very different woods. The mists have a mind of their own. The mist say? What mist do you speak of? In Barovia, wandering too far in the wrong direction, will always find the mists. Sounds like we went the wrong direction. Well, last I, uh, last I knew we were, uh, we were on the Sword Coast. And now we're somewhere called Barovia? She pulls from under her robe a deck of black cards. I could read them, should you wish. Now my experience says when somebody randomly pulls out black cards, you don't take the bet. my experience is you don't mess with magic you don't understand what kind of things would you be reading from the cards these will tell us why you are here and what you must do these cards are the ancient power of my people the Taraka deck we Vistani have relied upon their wisdom throughout the ages even in dark times such as this well what's the worst that could happen from somebody reading some cards I mean if you really want to find out well from my experience magic you don't understand is just science you haven't learned yet so let's learn only because I loosened it for you. <laughs> okay. She <clears throat> clears and smooths the velvet in front of her. She shuffles the deck and deals a card to your to your right of the center. This card tells of history. Knowledge of the ancient will help you better understand your enemy. And she flips it. Alrighty. Ah, 
The treasure lies in a dragon's house, in hands once clean, now corrupted. I'm going to help y'all and make a note of that. Tell us of this dragon. Is he might be a red dragon? The cards do not say. Don't interrupt. Ah. This next card, she plays the one facing nearest you, <clears throat> tells of a powerful force for good and protection, a holy symbol of great hope. Look to the Wizard of Wines. In a wood and sand, the treasure hides. Next is a card of great power and strength. It tells of a weapon of vengeance, a sword of sunlight. She plays the card to the opposite side. I see a throne fit for a king. Whoops. It should be I see the throne fit for a king. Alrighty. Now she plays the one nearest her. This card sheds light on one who will help you greatly in the battle against darkness. Find the leader of the feathered ones among the vines. Though he is old, he has more than one fight left in him. And last, she plays a card directly in the center. Your enemy is a creature of darkness whose powers are beyond mortality. This card will lead you to him. He dwells with the one whose blood sealed his doom, a brother of light snuffed out too soon. She observes the array of cards laid out in front of you and slowly begins to put them away. Well, that was certainly cryptic. You look tired. Please rest with my people. That sounds good to me. I've never been one to turn down a good bed. Well, as you go to leave the tent, you can see they're breaking into the wine and cheese. They're a, a jovial people. Um, bizarrely, 
comfortable and happy in this otherwise dreary land. Sounds like we're going to spend the eve with these guys. I'd, uh, I'd like to ask them if I may partake of some of their wines. Yes, they happily share. I'll thank them and, and take my wine. I will definitely uh, attempt to get some wine as well and critique it off of my own. Uh, critique it against my own brewer's uh, experience. So as you spend the evening with them, they tell you all they know of the land of Barovia. You are currently near the Ser Pool. You can just kind of see the village to the left of it. Uh, to the left of it? To the left of the pool, yes. I see a village to the right. Uh, it's like the, the four little tents. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, as encampment, right? Yeah. Yeah. There is a great castle standing high to the north and a long road that stretches through the entire place they're very open about their home if you have any questions um i'd like to ask them what the main um like what the main um like draw to this land is like what a what would cause somebody to want to stick around they laugh <clears throat> some private joke shared between them you are welcome to leave once you've met the master Where Who's the master? In the yeah. castle. They uh, glance towards the castle when you speak of the master, but they have not named him. Alrighty. Sounds like that's where we need to go. This is, this is the map of the whole of Bar uh, Barovia, correct? It is. Uh, is the castle the uh, centerpiece, the uh, capital here? Or is it somewhere else? Uh, the castle is there on the map just north of the Seerpool. You're very close to it. Right, right, right. But like uh, cultural wise. Oh, yes, it is. Okay. There are three major settlements. There is Kresk, Velaki, and Barovia. Mm, okay. There's also an abbey and a winery, but not much else. I see. Well, uh, what do you guys think should be our move in the morning? Um, what do you think we should uh, we should attend to first? I want to meet this master. It seems a meeting with the master might have been on the cards, whether or not the old crone saw it or not. Fair. Still weary about this enemy that she talked about, though. Yeah. Yes. I'm weary of everything. Sounds interesting. Nothing seems right since that mist rolled in. As the uh, night rolls on, one of the Vistani recounts the following tale. A mighty wizard came to this land over a year ago. I remember him like it was yesterday. He stood exactly where you're standing, a very charismatic man. 
He thought he could rally the people of Barovia against the master. He stirred them with thoughts of revolt and bore them to the castle en masse. When the master appeared, my wizard, the wizard's peasant army fled in terror. A few stood their ground and were never seen again. The wizard and the master threw spells at each other. The battle flew from the courtyards of Ravenloft to a precipice overlooking the falls. I saw this battle with my own eyes. Thunder shook the mountainside, and great rocks tumbled down upon the wizard, yet by his magic he survived. Lightning from the heavens struck the wizard, and again he stood his ground. But when the master fell upon him, his magic couldn't save him. I saw him thrown a thousand feet to his death. I climbed down the river to search for the wizard's body to see if, you know, he had anything of value. But the river had already spirited him away. Did you uh, did you not think to possibly check further down river, or could he maybe could his body have maybe washed up somewhere down that way? He explains that as time wore on, he grew fearful that the master would be angry. He was looking into the matter. So this master does not sound like the benevolent kind. Is he one to be feared? We Vistani do not fear the master. He seldom will raise a hand against us. For we served him when it was needed. Okay. Well, I know uh, my move in the morning. Sounds like we're still heading. Yeah, to the... definitely. Definitely seems like we're going to be heading there in the morning. But uh, I, I think we should probably first ask uh, which beds are ours. And I'm gonna I'm gonna call over to one of the one of the um, the Vistani and the encampment and ask them uh, which beds we're welcome to. As you begin to settle down for the evening, the music suddenly stops. There's a visitor sitting alongside you at the fire. You did not notice his approach. He has slick black hair, pale white skin, and is wearing a long cloak. He sips wine from a goblet, watching the fire. Um, can I roll insight and see if he means harm to anybody here, or if he's just chilling? That's going good with him. I want to I wanna buy check the guy, essentially. You get no sense of the man at all. It's as though he's not even there. I would like to walk to him. So do we know his, that he is there? Like you said, we notice his presence now. Uh, yes, the one of you on the outside could reach over and touch his shoulder. He's sitting on the logs beside you. I, I will lean just to where I can look at him in the face and he can see me clearly and ask uh, what his story is. My story is long. And complicated. First, you must tell me yours. It is the custom of our land. Well, it's not hard to tell where I'm from. But upon my birth, my family realized that I was not one of them. 
but a hybrid of them and elves and was cast away. And I've lived in the forest, learning its magic ever since. The people in the camp are nervously gathering their things and stepping away as chill as they can be, but they're giving you plenty of space. Fair enough. I will uh, re ask, uh, and almost in like a, in a very curious tone, what his story is. I came to this land to build a castle in honor of my mother, entombed her and my father beneath its soil. I've been here ever since. A castle, you what say? What is it that you do? Mostly, I wait. What are you waiting for? It remains to be seen. It's different every time. I assume you've been to see the witch. We have. Provided you're referring to Madame Eva, yes. And what wisdom did she have to share? Well, uh... She read some Taroka cards to us, uh, I believe is what she called them. And uh, she told us some very uh, cryptic things about uh, treasure and feathered ones and thrones uh, and about some enemy that we're uh, meant to face. He seems completely unsurprised. Feathers, you say. Please, go on. Uh, she told us we would, uh, <clears throat> were meant to find the leader of the Feathered Ones, uh, and the most description we got out of her about this leader was that he was old, but uh, seems to have at least one more fight left in him. Hmm. Surprising. What else did she say? Um... Well, she uh, she kept going on about some kind of treasure being hidden. Uh, she told us first about treasure that was in a dragon's house, but then she talked about uh, treasure hidden in wood and sand. Uh, hmm. Intriguing. A dragon's house. She must mean that old church. I shall have to go look. Is the is a dragon in the in the church here? Once there was a sect of paladins that served a dragon. Yes. They all died. Do you know anything about how they may have died? No one lives forever. At least most don't. Hmm. Well, it's interesting you bring up living forever because she also mentioned uh, something with our uh, our enemy and uh, powers of immortality. Something along those lines. Did Would change? that be fantastic? What else did she tell you? Come now, stranger. You said a tale for a tale. Is there a reason you're waiting? I wait for my beloved. And I'll say no more. I'll take that. I'll be able to fill some holes for you on that one. Sorry, what'd you say? <laughs> no, I said Archibald may be able to fill some holes for you on that one if you're waiting. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> <clears throat> the visitor did not notice. I want to study this man very carefully during his... Uh, he is talk. incredibly pale. Like, you feel like you can see through his skin. 
Uh, okay. Any uh, any physical detail that I can memorize, I want to memorize on this man. Okay. So, we begin again, he says as he stands, brushing the wrinkles out of his pants. I must insist you join me for dinner. I shall invite you and send a carriage when you're ready. Where is it we'll have be, uh, be having dinner? At my castle, of course. So you are the one they were referring to as the master. I am Count Strad. Von Zarovich, and I'm very pleased to meet you. Well, I would consider myself ready for dinner right about now. I, uh, I could definitely go for some food. I'd never turn down a good meal. Uh, yes, but I fear you're not prepared for a meal at my home. Didn't the old woman not tell you to seek some things, some fobbles? The man's right. I think we should uh, we'll look into these cards further before we uh, dine with our gracious host. Indeed, perhaps we'll see each other along the way. Any uh, other insights from these cards that you wish to share? No, I think that was about the gist of it. Yeah, no, I think I'm good on the, uh, the story I, sharing. I think I've shared about as much as I, uh, maybe even a little more than I should have. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that might yeah. not be wrong. Well, I do appreciate your openness. Let's see if we can open you up some more. Later. Can, uh, can I shake his hand as he's going to leave? He will not Reach out to you. Leave a man hanging. All right. Fist pump. He turns Elbow. his back. Takes three steps toward the forest and fades into mist. Because well, that kind of weird, right? That was... Archibald, I'm not going to say you're stupid. Uh, yeah, well, okay. Clint. Archibald, maybe, maybe I will. Uh, well, <laughs> my parents taught me how to be hospitable. What can I say? <laughs> well, maybe they also... <laughs> maybe just giving away our destiny to a man. We have had no idea who he was. Wasn't the best play. Especially when he looks like a good, good, good ghost. Especially <laughs> when we're apparently dealing with uh, a master who fought a great wizard. And uh, yeah, yeah, doesn't seem like that was probably the best play. Bro, straight up, I saw him sitting there, and like it almost felt like I couldn't see him sitting there. No, not to jump the gun on these uh, cards here, but a lot of what he was saying seems to fit in with what we were told. So, can I ask um, some of the townspeople if there are any left around us? There are not. All of them have gone into the there tents. You could probably go after them. I mean, I mean, I'm not looking to break down any doors here. That seems yeah, that seems a bit rude. <laughs> they never did say where we were sleeping. So, is there an obvious place met, set for us, or are we just kind of like looking around? They didn't say. You're right. All right. Well, yeah. So, is there? There's no obvious like place for us. It's kind of just. No. Alrighty. Well. Uh, did they? Uh, was the question asked, or did they just like straight up refuse to answer? The question was not asked. You didn't get a chance. Eva's tent still has candles burning. The rest are all dark. Hey, Archibald, you like talking to people. Hospitable, right? Go uh, find out where we're sleeping, buddy. I'd, uh, I'd like to go to. I'd like to pop into Madame Eva's tent. And uh, kind of ask her. Uh, where I might sleep, where me and my friends might bed down for the night. She stands slowly, comes around the table, 
grips your jaw in both hands, looking straight into your eyes. Could you finally be the one? Uh, what? I, ex I accidentally clicked on Fireball. <laughs> <laughs> that was like very, very interesting. Uh, could, could I be the one to what? I'm forbidden to say. You want to sleep, you may. The Vistani sleep together. Anywhere you'd like. Make yourselves at home. Wait, so you guys just kind of like sleep in heaps? Just like on the ground? In each tent, you'll find a large bed made of the finest stuffings. All right. Well, let's find an empty I'll go tent. Let my, I'll go let my friends know. And I'm going to walk out and fill them in that uh, they just need to find a place in a bed next to someone. I'm going to not do that. <laughs> I'm gonna be sleeping outside next to this fire. It's a warm fire. Yeah, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be stoking that bad boy. That's why the survival rules. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, actually now that you suggest it, I'll probably um forego the tents. Yeah, my bed rolls, for my own bed roll. Right now. <laughs> I would like to sleep in a tent. Okay, you have no trouble <laughs> finding a nice, large place to sleep near a snoring man and a young lady. And yeah, they're not like dogpiled, but they're all sort of sleeping in the tent together. Gotcha. Did she say like bed or beds? Was there an S on that? It varies a little bit by tent, but there is a large central mound of fluff that everyone sort of pulls up a piece of. Okay, I'm sleeping outside. <laughs> Come on, I man. When in Rome, just hop on in. All right. Well, everyone rests well. You could take a rest, but nobody needs it. And the morning, such as it is, dawns. The sun does not pierce the clouds, and the mist is ever-present. But it is day. Well, now that we've woken up, I'd like to um, sort of ask around uh, regarding the church that Mr. Strahd mentioned last night. He refers to Arginvasthop, Order of the Silver Dragon. It's west, beyond Valaki. Um, I'm going to cast speak with or first of all I'm gonna roll a perception and see if there are like any uh, like nearby birds and squirrels and other animals around okay there are how do you pull up the map again I accidentally closed it uh, so if you go into speak. images and maps you'll see a copy of everything that's been shared with you okay and what was it called Barovia yeah map dash Barovia Okay. Uh, I'm gonna cast speak with animals, okay. and see if there are any uh, birds or things like that that uh, see any dangers or interesting, cool things uh, <laughs> that have that are down this path. Yes, there are ravens along the path. Raven. Four, four or five ravens. And do they seem? Do they have an objective, or are they just? They are perched and watching you. Nice. Um, 
Well, didn't uh, hey uh, hey Rolesk, didn't we see a a card that had a raven on it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> maybe these ravens uh should be followed. Or maybe the ravens are following us. Do the uh do the ravens know of? Any feathered ones who might live among the vines. So you're casting Speak with Animals? Yeah, I, yes, I am. You go to speak to the first raven, rather large one. He doesn't understand and flies away. The second one responds to you. What was your question again? Just what is down the path? All paths lead to the master. You will die. Well, that's not very cash money of you. Um, <laughs> uh, from what will I die? The master controls all. We will feast upon your skin. I don't like these ravens. What are they saying? They're saying we're all gonna die and they're gonna eat us. Uh, it's very are there rude. any friendly creatures around or is it just those bad boy ravens? <laughs> 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 um, what other creatures? Yeah, there are uh, rodents, I'm sure. Sort of sickly rabbit, almost rat-like things. Guys, I don't know what the what these animals aren't or are eating, but they're not looking too hot. I'm gonna I'm gonna find the rabbit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask the rabbit uh, uh, why it why it uh, isn't eating or what it ate that made it look so sickly. The rabbit sort of hops over to you. The master feeds us. Slowly. What does he feed you? The grass seldom grows. And it's dark. Alrighty. Well, I'm sorry for that, buddy. That sucks. That really does just suck. Uh, where, does, where does the master appear from? Where does he come from? Pastor lives in the castle, but can appear anywhere he likes. He is the land. Alrighty, well, that's not ominous. Thanks, buddy. That's, that's it. That's all I really wanted to do. I guess we're just going to keep going. What did they say, Rolus? What did that rabbit thing say? So, I guess uh, the master feeds these animals over time, uh, probably because he controls, like, how much the grass grows and things like that. Uh, he just appears out of nowhere from the fog, I'm assuming, and it's just very ominous, but he's got a lot of power over this area. All of the animals kind of worship him, and uh, that's just how where we're at. So, so I think we're, we're dealing with some powerful stuff here. So, uh, which tarot card do you guys want to work on first? <laughs> Well, the, they said the church was at Lake Baratok, right? Or was that wrong? Uh, no, the church... Well, there is an abbey. Uh, where is the abbey? There is an abbey up at... Up past Luna Lake, I think. But no, they were talking about the uh, paladins... The old uh, Order of the Silver Dragon. It's past Velaki along the old Svalich Road. Well, I think since that was the first tarot card that was read to us, maybe we should start with that one. Uh, well, the other option, and this could be a dead end. We heard about the wizard that tried to start a revolt and miraculously never found his body, right? From what I understand, the waterfall that they fought on is just right over there, and the water 
was this way. So, uh, not wanting to say too much, but uh, what if Mr. Wizard Man is the feathered one we're looking for? Well, I don't, uh, I don't think it'd be in our best interest to, uh, to comb the banks of a river, uh, when it seems our destiny is everywhere else. Yeah, I think we should, I think we should start with the, uh, the first tarot card, since it was first. So, uh, I say we get a, well, I say we get a move on so we can, uh, get out of these people's hair. Yeah, we should probably start making, uh, making some progress along the road, uh, you know, maybe in finding what we need to do, we should define what we don't want to do. And what I don't want to do is go to the castle right now. Agreed? We can save that for a later Yeah. Time. So, uh, would you say I studied Strahd enough where, uh, if need be, I could uh, change into him? Uh, yes, you probably could. Okay. That's all I needed to know. Yeah. If, if we're all in agreement, then I guess we'll head to the church. All right. Over by, um, over past Vallecki. So should we stop in Vallecki to see where exactly the, the church is first? Probably would help. We should probably, yeah. The locals, yeah. So, all right. Uh, we set off for... The old Svalich Road and Valaki. Looks like that's going to be a bit of a walk. <laughs> yes, it will take you quite some time to get there. Each square on the map is, or each hex is a quarter mile. Whew. Yeah, that's a, that's a ways. <laughs> well, then might as well start heading out as soon as possible. Yep. Unless any of you know you say, of anything closer. <laughs> you say each hex was a quarter mile? What did you say? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Quarter mile. All right. So you embark upon the road to the northwest. Let's uh, take a one minute break here. Need to hit the restroom. I'll be right back. Okie dokie. All right. Uh, I too am going to go get medicine. I'll be right back. All right. So, uh, yeah. then, Greg, who has the personality to just start busting out comments about stuff? Because my guy was supposed to be very quiet, but it looks. Well, like I mean, I'm I I'm very charismatic, but. Yeah. So start talking, Bucko. <laughs> Um, I've been trying. See, but I'm 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 charismatic, but I'm also like I think I'm smarter than everyone else. So like. Yeah, so make snarky motherfucking comments about how you, uh... So, here's the thing, right? Uh, that picture of Strahd that we got... Mm -hmm. Yeah, of... it... He, he's a... He's a... Yeah, but in character, we don't know that. We don't know that. But the picture definitely literally showed him not having a reflection. But in character, he wasn't near a mirror. Okay, <laughs> so. now, hear me out here. I... Have a mirror. <laughs> you about to I, this dude with a mirror and be like, "See, I know it. I knew it." The whole got, time. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta think in character, though. Would your character just randomly whip out a mirror and be like, ah. "That's why I didn't do it." But also, hear me out here. I've also got wooden stakes, so <laughs> convenient. <laughs> Very convenient. So well, on me right now. You suggest this, but one of my actually my only character flaw is that I can't uh, admit any flaws in my logic, so I will vehemently refuse to do anything other than go for the first tarot card. Just saying. I'm 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 really glad he never like all of his his mild challenges to us were kind of uh, very indirect, because like my flaw is that my main answer to any challenge is violence. <laughs> I'm back. Hello. 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 I, I believe Mike's Mike still gone. Still, yeah. 
he's been kind of dying today. So, so uh, Bob, I'm gonna not gonna lie, I made a little bit of an error. Okay. Uh, I forgot at the last second when I was creating my character that it made more sense to go folk hero. So what I told the master was complete bullshit. <laughs> but... Okay. <laughs> Wait, what'd but you tell him? I told him that I was basically an outcast. Like, oh. a, uh, which that's so not how it is at all. I'm full basically, the complete opposite of what he is. <laughs> basically, literally the exact opposite of the thing. Yeah. Hey, that yeah, may be to your advantage. You never know. Mind. Pretty bright, so yeah. I was more, I was more of an inquisitor of my. Uh, but yeah, so that master can. You know, you know. Anyways. But uh, yeah. I can't wait till level two because then I actually become a character and not just a guy with a sword. <laughs> I can't you wait know. till level three because I've actually become a character and not a guy with a bow. Yeah, out of character, I think it's probably not a good idea that I told the guy that the module is named after all of our plans. But yeah. in character, I'm <laughs> right. but in character, I'm a little bit of a meathead dragon. So <laughs> he just kept digging. I, yeah, Archibald that's why I like kind of stepped in, just because like, oh god, don't. Because <laughs> he was he was gonna pull every single one of the tarot cards out of you if you just let. Yeah. <laughs> but also in character, my intelligence I believe is a is it's a nine. Uh, <laughs> that's normal. That's not that's fantastic. Low average. Yeah. yeah. Welcome hey, back. back. All right. So is everybody back? Is anybody not back? If you're not back, say so now. <laughs> <laughs> I think everyone's here. I believe so, yep. too. Yep. All right. Well, I'm going to throw this thing at you. I'm ready. As you trek down the road, you catch a fleeting glimpse of a man in a long burgundy cloak walking toward a house. Okay. He gazes out at the house, just sort of standing here by the road for a few moments and disappears. I say we move to um, investigate. Kind of roll a perception to see where the heck he went. Am yeah. I supposed to see something here? Yeah, it's all black for us. This is a map. It Scroll up to the top. Is. Scroll to the top of said map. Uh, how do I? Oh, I'm getting his black screen. Yeah. Oh, you're getting his black screen. All right, here, let's do this. Um. There it goes. Uh, just popped in up at the top. Well, then we just saw a man go into the house. Was he suspicious looking, or was he just the man walking into the house? He seemed a little familiar. I think we should follow him. Like, should I roll a history check familiar, or like I would know him familiar? Like, I think he's the guy you saw last night. But he didn't go into the house. He disappeared before he made it inside. Huh. So, do we want to mess with that? <laughs> we, yeah, do we want to mess with Scary Man? It's just a burgundy coat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean... Where is the house? Where are we on the give or take? The actual big map. On the actual big map, you're just past the bridge. You're under the. You're looking up at the castle. And that's where this house is. Yes, the house is there, just off the copse of trees. Underneath that lovely piece of real estate. Oh, oh, is that the, the 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 castle that they told us where the master is? Yes. Okay. Pretty decent castle. A man does know where to put his castle. It's a very good spot for it. So, uh, did those raven did those ravens have red eyes when I was talking to him earlier? <laughs> they did not. Okay, that's cool. Cause like I was like, I don't know if I would have been talking to red-eyed ravens. 
I'm dragging you guys all down here. Okay. You are standing in front of the first floor of that house. There's a wrought iron gate with hinges on one side and a lock on the other, filling the archway of a stone portico. Is it uh is there anything off looking about the house or is it just like a house? I mean it's, it's a house. It's okay. Sort of a strange style that you're not familiar with, but it is a strange land. And you're strangers in a strange land. They're strangers in a strange land. I'm going to hide <laughs> So I don't know about you guys, but uh, getting some very creepy vibes from this place. Well, if that man is who I believe he is to be, and I'm pretty sure I believe he is the man that we saw last night, and he's possibly in this house, and I don't want to mess with that man. I don't think I want to mess with this house. Where is your character, Jacob? I don't know. I'm still on the front view. Oh. I am perfectly complacent. So. I think we should investigate the house. You guys yeah, not all... Hide and peek into the window there. Or any window I can see. Sorry about that, Jacob. Hold on. Ah. I mean, oop. just uh, so which sure. window are you peeking through there, Micah? Just that first one? Yeah. Um, you can't see much, but it looks like a hunter's den mounted above the fireplace is a stag head. That's all I see. Don't see anything out of place or anything. It looks like a dusty old house. Well, I don't see much going on in there. I see no reason to be standing around the outside of this house. I also see no reason to go in the house. Yeah, this this doesn't seem like the most uh, inviting of places. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's locked. I mean, like, are you just going to break into it? Yeah. Why? It's actually not locked. locked. Yeah, uh, has there, anyone actually on checked side. the door? <clears throat> there is a lock on the gate, but it's not closed. Oh, I think I think we should investigate further. I think that um, Mr. Flappy Lips should go first. I'm going to like kind of volunteer, Greg. I'm going to second that motion. <laughs> well, as I don't want to discuss a party, spilling <laughs> the beans would be unwise. And I'm guessing up here is the gate. Yes. Uh, I'm just gonna. So is the gate like open, open, or are you just meaning the lock is open? The lock is open. It's got a padlock. Okay. It's not clicked down. Gotcha. Uh, well, I'd like to push the gate open and kind of like carefully step through. Okay. I guess I'll be, like, second in. So the gate... shrieks open. Oil lamps hanging in the port co by chains flank a set of oaken doors that open into the grand foyer. Go ahead and go inside. There you go. Going in. Uh, this is the furthest that it lets me go. Is this little cubby hole here? Uh, you can open the door. Okay, there we go. Yeah. And yeah, you're in a little uh, coat room. Okay. Is there anything uh, interesting in here, or is it just kind of 
It's like an empty room. There's a shield emblazoned with a coat of arms. It's a golden windmill on a red field. And it's flanked by framed portraits of stony-faced aristocrats. The doors on the inside of the foyer are mahogany. Gotcha. And they're set with panes of stained glass. Can you click that door to open it, or do I have to do that? There you go. Uh, nope. okay. okay, there we go. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna open that door and walk into the the new room. Um, this is a wide hall running the width of the house. There's a black marble fireplace at one end and a sweeping red marble staircase at the other. Mounted on the wall above the fireplace is a longsword with a windmill cameo worked into the hilt. Hmm. The wood paneled walls are ornately sculpted with images of vines, flowers, nymphs, and satyrs. The decorative paneling follows the staircase as it circles up toward the second floor. Gotcha. Did you say vines? Yes. Vines, flowers, nymphs, and satyrs. You want to make a perception check? Yeah, I want to make a perception check. No. Find it here. Skins. Uh, I would love to also make a perception check to see if there's anything running amok. Okay, go ahead. Anything, anything weird going on here? I don't know. <laughs> so Valath notices also woven into the designs are serpents and skulls. They're sort of a design within a design. Interesting. I'm going to point it out to uh, Mr. Dell. <clears throat> ah, see? See? Bad bad things. Scary. <laughs> Skulls. Um, is there anything uh, on any of the other doors in this room, or are they just like wooden doors? Or? They're wooden doors. They're finely made, um, gotcha. but no, nothing... Nothing otherwise noteworthy. Gotcha. Well, uh, you guys uh, have any particular interest in going upstairs and seeing what's going on up there? Uh, sweeping clear, right? Floor by floor. It's always floor by floor. Yeah, you guys let's uh, rob the house before. I can't <laughs> say I have. <laughs> Let, let's check out the den that Micah could kind of see in the window a little bit first, I think. I agree. All right. Oh. <laughs> I don't like that. This oak-paneled room looks like a hunter's den. Mounted above the fireplace is a stag's head, and positioned around the outskirts of the room are three stuffed wolves. Two padded chairs draped in animal furs face the hearth with an oak table between them supporting a cask of wine, two carved wooden goblets, a pipe rack, and a candelabrum. A chandelier hangs above a cloth-covered table surrounded by four chairs. Two cabinets stand against the walls. I'm going to check out the wine that's sitting on the table. I'm going to investigate one of these stuffed wolves quote unquote I don't care I'm just going to look at the wine <laughs> well, I'll stay out here with the staircases so uh, we know the what's going on the wine cask is unopened not anymore <laughs> <laughs> is there an uncorking sound like doom, you know <laughs> <laughs> if so it's emblazoned with red dragon crush as its brand there's this 
Ha. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that works. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can <laughs> tell if this is gonna harm me in any form or fashion. If it just or if it just looks like good drink. It smells fantastic. Then I'm gonna. It's gonna. I'm gonna take a sip and see what happens. <laughs> So from a red wine perspective, it's the best you've ever tasted. From any other perspective, or is it just really good red wine? Because it's still it, I'm keeping it. It's fantastic. It's it's All right. probably very expensive. Gotcha. Well, it is now part of my collection. <laughs> so. I'm just gonna I'm gonna take a big swig of it and put it into my uh, my with my stuff, my backpack, if you will. All right. How do I how do I add that to my? Um. I can do that for you. Hold on. I assume I have a cask of wine here. I do not. Um. Put it in your notes, I suppose. Cool. <clears throat> so good. how's um how's Micah's investigation of the wolves going? Did he roll an investigation of the wolves? They're wolves. They're they're stuffed wolves. They are stuffed wolves. Nothing fancy about they're them. Not moving. They've not come alive to try to eat you yet. Mm. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't like that yet. All right. I'm gonna go in, over one of the bookshelves and uh, look for any valuables. All right, so you're talking about the cabinets? Or cabinets, yeah, sorry, not bookshelves. Stand in the doorway. All right, which one are you checking first? You're checking the east cabinet. This one's locked. It's locked? It is. Well, I think. I think, and I have some thieves' tools I would like to use to make it not locked. Okay. Give us a sleight of hand check. Oof. <laughs> <clears throat> it is still locked. Well, that's that's my joke. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna push the matter of unlocking it further. Yeah, I don't. I don't like this room. I'm thinking I want to leave this room. Yeah, I'm gonna head out too. And what's this Why little not? hall up here, Greg? Uh, looks like more doors. Yep. Let's check them out. Where are you going next? Uh, I'm going to go to this, uh, take this front door here. Walk into what looks like a dining room of sorts. The centerpiece of this wood panel dining room is a carved mahogany table surrounded by eight high back chairs with sculpted armrests and cushion seats. A crystal chandelier hangs above the table. And it's covered with resplendent silver crystal ware polished to a dazzling shine. Mounted above the marble fireplace is a mahogany framed painting of an alpine, ve alpine veil. The wood paneling is carved with elegant images of deer among the trees. Red silk drapes cover the windows and a tapestry depicting hunting dogs and a horse and horse mounted aristocrats chasing after a wolf hangs from an iron Rod bolted to the south wall. I'm starting to think whoever owns this place has a thing for hunting. Wolves, particularly. Specifically wolves, yes. Um, oh. Can I take a closer look at both the tapestry and the painting to see if there's anything nefarious about them, like the uh, wallpaper? Sure, give me a perception check. Okay, skills. Perception. Poop. Okay, so there's nothing to note about the tapestry or the painting. However, the paneling in this room 
also depicts twisted faces carved into the tree trunks and wolves lurking among the carved foliage. I'd like to make a check real quick, uh, perception, just to see if I hear anything, smell anything, and, you know, you just see anything, see anything weird other than these four, four other dudes, dudes walking around this house. Sure. <laughs> you do not. The air is not as stale, perhaps, as it should be for a dusty house like this, but nothing seems out of place. Ooh, that's a good point. Is it dusty? Is there is there a lot of dust on a lot of things, or does it seem relatively clean? It seems to have been vacant about a week. Okay. Gotcha. All right, well, I'm going to open this door. Final look to leave that room. Oh. Alrighty. This is a kitchen. Dishware, cookware, utensils neatly packed on shelves. A work table has a cutting board and a rolling pin on top of it. A stone dome shaped oven stands near the east wall. It's bent iron stove pipe connecting to a hole in the ceiling. Behind the small stone door in the southwest corner of the kitchen is a dumb waiter. All right, you go into any, uh, that room back in behind the stove is a pantry. Gotcha. In this mm-hmm. uh, pantry, are there any, or in the kitchen in general, how's the uh, how's the liquid situation looking? <laughs> Looks fine. Is there any uh, is there any more of that wine? There is or not. Any other... All right. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm come out. back and check this sword out again. So it's a fine steel long sword with the windmill emblazoned into the hilt. With the the snakes and everything no that was that was the like mural up around the uh stairs basically uh okay where's my pin hold on there you go (laughs) yeah you can take it if you'd like dell you want it i'll throw it into the party sheet so this is on the top right next to the combat tracker just Party a has a long, long sword. sword. Um, it's not really my style. I'm, if you don't want it, I might take it. Let me double check here. Make sure that he threw it into the like party parcel items. Outside of selling it, there's not much I could use it for. All right, looks like uh, floor two is our next uh, point of investigation. Yeah, let's head on up, Greg. All right, second floor. Do we just pop out like... All right, over here. How do we do it? He's He's moving us. Oh, okay. Unlit oil lamps are mounted in the walls of this elegant hall. Hanging above the mantel place is a wood-framed portrait of the family. I would like Cradled to in the baby. father's arms is a swaddled baby, with the mother regards with a hint of scorn. Standing suits of armor flank wooden doors in the east and west walls. Each suit has a spear and a visored helm shaped like a wolf's head. Doors are carved with dancing youths. And a red marble staircase that started on the first floor continues upward in a spiral. I want to look closer at that picture and uh, see if I find in, uh, any familiarity between the man we saw and. Uh, ooh. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, <clears throat> And the people on the picture. Be it his father, be it him, whoever. I uh, know. He, he does bear a resemblance to the paintings on the first floor, but not to gotcha. the uh, not to the master. Okay. So uh, I'd like to go to the, uh, the south door and uh, press on with the investigation. Okay. 
Gossamer drapes cover the windows of this elegantly appointed hall, which has brass-plated chandelier hanging from the ceiling. Upholstered chairs line the walls, and a stained glass wall depicts beautiful men, women, and children singing and playing instruments. A harpsichord with a bench rests in the northwest corner. Near the fireplace is a standing harp. Alabaster figurines of well-dressed dancers adorn the mantelpiece. Not the greatest musician, so onward. I want to take a closer look at these uh, suits of armor. So they're uh, they're not real plate, but they're made to look like it with a wolfen helm. Hmm. Neat. Looks like Rolesk is leading the charge to this room. <laughs> Red velvet drapes cover the windows of this room. An exquisite mahogany desk and a matching high back chair face the entrance in the fireplace, above which hangs a framed picture of a windmill perched atop a rocky crag. Situated in the four corners of the room are two overstuffed chairs. Situated in the corners of the room, not the four corners, sorry. Floor-to-ceiling bookshelves lie in the south wall. A, ro a rolling wooden ladder allows one to more easily reach high shelves. This one seems like a library of sorts. Um, Anything else on this floor that we can see, though? There was another door at the at the top of the stairs, by the looks of it. Do not forget we were not invited into this house. We must be swift. This undecorated bedroom contains oh, a pair of beds with straw stuff mattresses. There's a dumb waiter in the northwest or in the corner of the west wall. Gotcha. So that must be the upper portion of the uh, the one from the kitchen. That would make sense, seeing as uh, it's above the kitchen. Well, um, wasn't much on this floor to really talk about. Heading up. Yeah, let's you, go to the go to the next floor. All right, let me toss you up there. One second. I gotta grab the center of the room here. There's a dusty balcony with a suit of black plate armor standing against one wall draped in cobwebs. Oil lamps are mounted on the oak paneled walls which are carved with woodland seeds of trees, falling leaves, and tiny critters. I'm gonna check out over here. That's a bathroom, wooden tub with clawed feet, a small iron stove with a kettle resting atop it, and a barrel under a spigot. The cistern on the roof used to collect rainwater, which was borne down to a pipe to the spigot. Gotcha. Not a whole lot in there. Southern door. Or, uh, western. Little closet? Or... Storage room. Okay. However, as soon as you step inside the room, a broom animates to life and attacks you. Roll Good. initiative. Not already. And to that end, we will push a button here. 
Oof. I feel you, Mikey. <laughs> no, we're just not having a good time tonight. <laughs> Well, it's not real important for me to be high up on this initiative right now because uh, it's got two people to go through. Yeah, me being one of them. Yep. One second. Well, that wasn't what I wanted. That didn't sound like a broom. <laughs> it really did, did it? Let's do that one. <laughs> There we go. I got your horror movie sounds. <laughs> All right. So everybody's got their initiatives in. Rolesk is first. Alrighty, I'm going to just set up a ready action. Uh, that if this broom were to exit the room, I will just attack it with my uh, skimtar. Other than that, I'm just going to uh, hang out out here, I guess. Okay. Ready my ready my my sword. All right. On the combat tracker, plus press the next turn button when you're ready to proceed. It's in the bottom okay. left of the combat tracker. Just a little dragon head. There you go. Archibald. All right. So. Uh, how tight is this uh, kind of closet area? Am I able to get past uh, Valoth, or am I kind of... Uh, you cannot end your turn in his square, so you can step where he yeah. is, attack, and step back, but that would provoke. Hmm. Well, uh, then I would just like to uh, set up a similar ready action of, uh, of attack if the broom makes its way out. Okay. And then I will pass my turn over. Okay. Uh, so it's just the, the two squares in there, and you said you, could end, you can't end your turn inside of someone else's square? Right. You can split your moves. So you could step where Mike is currently standing, attack, and then step back, but doing so would, of course, provoke. Can I step to where Greg currently is standing and cast a ranged attack? You could. Don't right, fumble. I'm, I'm going to do that. Okay, and I see the broom. So I'm going to cast a frostbite on the broom. So failure, so... So it failed to save. That's a good thing for you. Okay. Roll the damage. So I... Doesn't have a damage dice. What was it? Frostbite? Yeah, it's 1d6, right? You want me to just throw a d6 in there? Yeah, let me check here. Yeah, so if you click the uh, magnifying oh, glass, I see it. I see it. then you can just grab the little blood drop and drag and drop it on him. Yeah. So, How do I get rid of a dice I'm already holding? Well, you can I... just roll it. Okay. Because I, I already grabbed a six. So that's a four. You want to use the four? We could use the four if you yeah. want to. Yeah, I already grabbed the dice. Like as I, I shouldn't have grabbed it, but I did because I didn't All right. see the D six cold. That's it. Uh, and then I will move back to the square I was in. Okay. And then if you're done, hit the button. Yep. All and right. Then you should get a disadvantage on his next weapon attack roll. Uh, since he failed the, the constitution save. Um, okay. So, multi-attack. First one's a hit. Second one's 
Second attack. Also a hit. Valath is down. Oof. Del? How does it feel to get taken down? So how do you handle um, changing weapons? Because I put on my rapier when I came in here because it's close quarters, and now I don't want to be near that thing. You can definitely change it. It's fine. Okay. Neat. So I'm just going to shoot an arrow at it. Alrighty. That's a hit. Uh, for 1d8. <clears throat> Heavily and damaged. That's that's me. Okay. Valaf makes a death save successfully. Where does it say that? Uh, it did okay. it automatically. Yeah. Okay, yeah, because it didn't even tell me. Huh. That. Rolesk. Uh, already, um, I'm going to. Huh. Uh, I'm gonna walk to into Greg's kind of area. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to cast. Yeah, I'm gonna cast poison spray onto it. Okay. Uh, it's got to save. Yeah, so expand your spell. A little uh, magnifying glass there. Wait, 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 what was that? Uh, expand the magnifying glass just to the left of the dragon's head. Then you can drag oh, that save dice directly onto the broom. There we go. He failed his save. Now drag the damage dice directly onto the broom. He resisted. Yep, yep, he did. Uh, and then I'm going to move back. And that'll be me. Then click your uh, end turn button. Okie dokie, I'm going to move into the square with the dying man. Um, and I'm going to swing my greatsword at the broom. Why did that do that twice? Uh, it did it with disadvantage. Hold on. Oh, gotcha. That's because it doesn't think you're proficient in your armor class. And I don't know why it continues to do this. That's weird. Wait, Greg, you're a barbarian, right? Yeah. Are you even wearing armor? No. Why? <laughs> <laughs> All right, try it again. Okay. Okay, still misses. <laughs> okay. And. So, Bob, whenever you get a chance, I uh. Oh, I'm at I did not cast that. I'm trying to look at it real quick. That's action. So. I'm, uh, I have to take the opportunity attack to move out. Okay. If and you're sure. He you missed. Okay. So, I'm sorry, what'd you say, Carfield? Uh, I lost the map. Uh, just type in, just go to images and maps and type in death house. Oh, is it just death house? Are we all Yeah, on and it'll, okay, it'll be map death house. I, I lost it too. I found it. We're good. Now I'm just going to end my turn. All right. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to move into Greg's square. Okay. And this time I'm going to, uh, cast a firebolt at him. That's, That's a hit. A hit. Fire. That's five damage. Then I'm going to move out of Greg's square. He did. All right. Do I have to still click? Okay. I'd love to help Mr. Boy up. <laughs> so.
So what are you gonna do? I was gonna walk in there and help uh, Alice up. make sure. Hopefully, you know, I don't, I don't have any uh, cure wounds, but I definitely can help the man up. I'm gonna do like a medicine check to stabilize him. Sure, sounds great. That's super loud. Why is that so loud? I didn't cast it on him, but I, I did roll that 18. <laughs> Okay, so you rolled uh, to stabilize him. We shall remove the unconsciousness effect. And wait a minute, one hit point. <laughs> nice. I mean, what else do you need, really? Yeah, as as a uh, as a ranged character. As a level one ranged character, uh, uh, open up the door first. You're not so ranged. That, no, I'm, I'm. No, he's a melee rogue. Oh. Uh, I am going melee rogue. Since I'm so, melee uh, rogue. So Veloth, how'd all your uh, how'd all your spy training help with that broom? <laughs> Shut up. Look now, what did we learn? That the uh, talkative ape goes first. Exactly, and. Uh, <laughs> Can, Is there anything uh, special with a broom to just kind of like snap in half? It did, yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, and unless anybody's opposed, I say we press on south. Valeth, you've I mean, had a uh, bad track record with uh, cleaning supplies lately, haven't you? Shut <laughs> up. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And I'm going to open the door to the south. <laughs> All righty. I'm gonna stay with Bella, uh, just to make sure. Uh, I'm gonna like oh, chill. A rogue <laughs> duster doesn't come in and attack him again. I mean, you could take a short rest if you wanted to recuperate. That would give I you like a chance to roll idea. a hit dice. I like that idea. You have to chill out for about an hour in the creepy house to do that. But you yeah, could. I don't like that idea, Micah. I really don't. We've already we gotta, been here for. We well, gotta spend he, as little time here as possible. If he would like that, we may want to secure a room to ourselves. Yeah, hey, look, a room with All a right. bed. <clears throat> so this room has uh, dust and cobweb shrouding an elegantly appointed bedroom and an adjoining nursery. Double doors set with stained glass pull open to reveal a balcony overlooking the front of the house. Oh. Fancy. Hey, uh, quick question. The rest of this floor, did it have the same amount of layer of dust that this room does? No, this room is far dustier. Now the second... Hold on, that just happened. Stop, 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 stop. Archibald is right there. Sorry. <laughs> Archibald comes into a nursery with a crib hanging, uh, covered with a black hanging shroud. The moment you do... A shriek from the bedroom. Um, let's use one second. Let me find the right sounds here. All right, we can use a ghost one again, I guess. That's not a very good sound for our health, most likely. Uh -huh. All right, you hear a loud shrieking sound, and a specter appears right next to the bed. Uh, 
Nice. Why? <laughs> Heck yeah, dude. <laughs> All because Archibald went into the nursery. <clears throat> Initiatives, please. Uh, All right. Oh, oh. Uh. All righty. Well, all right. So you said we're not worrying about switching weapons in the action. Yeah, that's fine. Ah. Okay, I'm gonna attack it with me rapier. The specter resembles a terrified, skeletally thin young woman. Oh. Swing That's a miss. Me, folks. Go ahead. All right. That's crazy. One second. I'm looking at her actions here. Okay, so she's going to step through Rolesk, dealing damage to him as she goes, and reappearing on the other side of him. Vela's turn. I'm going to stay back from her and try to shoot her with my short bow. Ah, that wasn't it. That's it. So did you say she's still behind me or she's in the middle of all of us again? She's behind you. She's up against the wall. Nice. The big purple thing. Yeah, I didn't know. Okay. Good. All right. Well, it looks like I hit her. So. It did. Partially resisted. And then as a uh, bonus action, can I hide? Or is, wait, do I have that ability yet? Is that an ability? Uh, yeah, I don't know that you can hide in plain sight. You could maybe step around the corner and hide. Can I go here and like crouch beside the bed and hide? Sure. Do I need to roll a stealth? Not unless someone tries to find you. You're alright. Excuse me. Right. And that is my turn. I'm just gonna keep it simple. I'm gonna I'm gonna hit the nursemaid with frostbite again. That's a successful Success. save. So that's what half damage, right? Uh, you doing frostbite? Let's look. Yeah. On a failed save, it takes one d six cold damage. Nope. Save a successful save means nothing. They take okay. Nothing. Most cantrips are like that. So you can still move if you like. Or you can... Uh, no, I'm good. All right. So click the finish turn button. And oh, it'll yes. be Archibald's turn. Alrighty. Okay, gonna head over there. Um, I'm going to use my bonus action to rage. All right. Uh, which does that automatically apply the damage bonus if I hit or? Um, I think, let's see, we have to put the rage effect on you. Gotcha. I can do that. Hold on. Actions, rage. If we click the hourglass, then we can drag and drop it on you. There you go. All right. All right. And uh, I'm going to swing my greatsword at her. And um, that's me. 
All right. And end turn. Alrighty. Uh, I'm going to swing, as the kids might say. How cool. <laughs> We're not doing hot on this one. No. Uh, and then, uh, as a bonus action, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at her, and that's gonna be. It. Okay. Come on, click the button. Neat. Um, oh, hey, uh, she was in... Never mind. It's a bit late now. What's that? Uh, well, she was in between uh, me, Valoth, and uh, Kalu, right? And then she left our attack range? She did, but she did so with an ability called Incorporal Movement, so you wouldn't be able to attack her while she's doing it. Okay. So I guess I'll just go at her with the bow then, since she's far away. Oh, it was the bow, right? Yeah, that's pretty sure. That's yeah. it. Hmm. Uh, that's, that's, that's it, folks. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be, that's all. All right, she's going to attack with her life drain ability. She hit Rolesk for a whole bunch of damage, and he goes down. That's what I get for using metal as a druid, so... <laughs> yeah, true. Fell off. Uh, since there is indeed friendlies within five feet of her, I'm going to do a short bow attack with sneak attack. Sure. If you hit. If I hit, that is true. Well, that wasn't. How did that not? There it goes. Okay. Yikes. All right. I'm not going to do that. And I am uh, going to stay hidden behind the uh, bed, and uh, that will be my turn. All right. Okay, so uh, since since we're all sucking with our, um, our damage rolls and all that, I'm going to just kind of remove that from the equation. And I'm going to use Magic Missile on her. All right. I'm gonna shoot all three of my darts at her. So I have to I have to roll a a D four on her for each dart, right? Yeah, drag the damage dice onto her for each one. Okay. So that's the first dart. That's the second dart. And the third dart. And that's gonna be my turn. Okay, she is heavily damaged. All right, I'm going to try to swing my greatsword at her again. This time hitting. Finish her off, Archie. And it dissipates, leaving behind only a thin wisp of cloth. Uh, <laughs> all right. I want to try to stabilize Mr. Rolesk. <laughs> so, do, 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 Thanks, do, dog. Do, do. medicine. This one. Uh, I'm just going to roll it here. Not great. Not great. Not good enough. 
upon seeing Jacob's uh, attempt, I'm going to also make a medicine roll. Do I drag it onto Rolesk for it to apply, or...? Uh, it doesn't matter. Okay. Oh, it just didn't let me roll if I dragged it onto him. Okay. Oh, um... So... <laughs> <laughs> Embarrassing. Good enough. Uh, so, by the way, Bob, um... For the future, that rage effect that you put on me says that it's increasing my damage by four. Uh, and I believe at level one, it's only supposed to increase it by two. Okay. That's all right. We'll consider it a little extra bonus. You need it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So let's assume that between the two of you, you've stabilized him. Okay. Hey. Okay. Good. <laughs> I plugged one hole and he just plugged the other one. And then yeah. we all good. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, would we like um, to take a rest in this here room? Yeah, maybe maybe a short rest would be a little wise uh, now that we have two wounded. I suggest uh, I suggest I take watch at one of the doors, and uh, somebody should probably watch any other entrances. I'm going to I'm going to kind of chill out on the balcony here. I can like maybe see if people coming. Okay. I will be in the room, like, over here, looking over at... Here, so they can't see me as easily. All right. Can't draw I'm going so to here. click the short rest button, which will refresh anything you guys have that refreshes on a short rest. For those of you who wish to do so, you can open your character sheet and roll your hit dice to heal back some health. It's on the main page. Ah... Hey! Full health. Good job, bud. Still wounded. <laughs> All right. But, but, <laughs> and I think we're going to wrap there. I'm going to stop the uh, recording. Thank you guys All so right. much for coming. Yep. Fun yep. stuff, fun stuff.